Welcome back to episode four of my tutorial series on making a prefab and I have been a busy bee. Look at this little thing. This is testing one, two, three, the little 25 by 25 block that we've been messing around with. And I've actually created a little prefab here, an industrial prefab looking good. I've got little pipes around the back. I've got a couple of buildings. Oh, another little building out there. You've got to get a toilet in there, haven't you? We'll have a look at that in due time. But today what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at a few little things. Firstly, at the bottom of the screen here you can see the dev admin block replace tool we'll have a look at that at some point the dev modeling or terrain modeling tool and uh, yeah i've got this little room here let me show you this little sneaky cheeky one here i've got a couple of boxes and i'm thinking underneath these boxes of uh, digging a tunnel in here and making something with all this space underneath here so i'm going to show you how to basically make a little kind of like system underneath and we'll mess around with the terrain and uh, yeah we'll make something look pretty good we've also got to look at uh, placing blocks here because if i take a nice little block here and then stick in my concrete can you see that look at that look at those little uh, little notches on the side we want it all smooth and gorgeous i'll show you how to do that too and and if you're still listening if you're still listening by the end of this i'm going to show you my secret way of putting water down on the floor in the most perfect way ever but first, the old spreadsheet that I talked about in the third episode. And we just need to quickly look at country town POIs, where we have diagonal and no diagonal. This is something that we need to add to the code. And also residential, where we end up having two different things. We have a plain standard POI and a cul-de-sac POI. Now, I'll show you some examples in a moment. But the country town, basically, there's a diagonal kind of section in the road. So what you can't do if it's a diagonal is you can't place anything in the corners now on the on the big one it makes no difference at all as in there is a not a diagonal version of the 100 by 100 for the 42 by 42 then the diagonals can occur on either side so you better make sure each side is clear and for the 25 by 25 it only affects one side the left hand side as we're looking north to south and for the residentials, we have a cul-de-sac, so an area where it's just there's a little roundabout at the end, and you basically need to use driveways at the back. There, there's lots of them that's been made ready for you, but I would always have your house in the actual area. I would do it on both of them, then they'd fit anywhere. There's just one little thing we've got to get our head around. For the residential cul-de-sacs, if you mark something as cul-de-sac, then it could be in a cul-de-sac, or it could not. Where for the country town, if you mark something as a diagonal, then it will be placed in the diagonal position. And if it's marked as a no diagonal, then it will be placed in the no diagonal position. So country town is an either or tag and residential is a could be added to a cul-de-sac tag. So here I am on pre-gen 10k1. I've opened it up in the world editor so we can have a look. And in this country town uh, tile, the T tile, we can see that we have bookstore 04 here. It's got a nice placement of a driveway. And the reason that there is a diagonal one is because you can see that this section here is placed and there are a, there's a diagonal in the road here. There's a diagonal. And that is uh, a potentially an issue if you have a driveway here. Behind us, we have an example of gas station 08, which is all good. And you can see they've got just the right distance across from here. So when this places, it fits in really nicely. Is that correct for this side too, if it was placed on the other side of the road? Well, here's your answer. That, that's where it was on the other side, but here it is. Now, this is like, this is, I'm being finickety, but the whole point is, is if you place things correctly, it's all good. This one here needs to really be just one more to the left. If you are like me and you think that these two blocks here should actually be placed against this section here, because I think it would just look that little bit better. And it's just that seamless little perfection that makes a game look better and better. So, you know, use the spreadsheet and uh, try and make your your POIs fit in everywhere in game. So still on pre-gen 10k1 and this is a cul-de-sac so it's a little region where you just have this round section at the end and of course placing a, a little prefab here this POI it's kind of weird that it's not leveled up you know you know that this would have been built in a slightly different position so it is best to make driveways come around the back here because there are this where there is part driveway residential back 02. There's plenty of these available and they cut 
cut in and all the cul-de-sacs have like these kind of black lanes which is great if you get it wrong and this is an official map then you could be placing house old tudor 2 in a cul-de-sac it's marked as a cul-de-sac and of course this is where you get this is the official driveway into a cul-de-sac and this is meant to be um exactly how somebody would make it and i'm sorry that is that is just not good enough for the game they, that should not be here and that's again why you need to make sure that your pois are perfect and ready to fit in so i've just booted up house old tudor 2 yeah 202 and there's the driveway this should not be in a cul-de-sac but it is the game does that if i press escape i'm hoping that one day the developers press escape hit level tools hit prefab properties and yes it has been correctly uh, clicked as a residential POI so it goes into the right tile but this cul-de-sac needs to be removed it does not work it looks disgusting I don't like it it's in the pre-gen 10k1 map I, I I don't like it at all but there we go and of course gas station 08 I'd be moving this just one over it wouldn't take too much hassle just to shift all this over and it would just look that a little bit better again escape and then the old level tools we go to prefab properties and you can see that this one has a few other different bits and bobs. So it is a country town POI, so that's been ticked. It has been said, yes, this can be placed on diagonal, so it's on there. There's also gateway and no checkpoint. So this means with the gateway, it can go on a gateway tile. Again, you've got to spend the time having a look at the tiles, and they're the ones where it kind of all links up when the, the roads kind of cross. And then also no checkpoint, so there's not going to be placed one of the checkpoint POIs that you get in the, you know, at the start of little cities, and it places it on the outside here. So earlier we placed this little block, and you can see the kind of error that it makes these gaps around here these are going to be seen in game and we've got to kind of get this right so if you just shoot out some blocks and then start adding some more pathway here we do have a little bit of a problem if you've got existing pathway then if i go shift and z let's pick a couple of those and then control shift c control shift v and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold g and bring this along there we go we'll stick that right there control shift and v and they've been placed there and the problem doesn't seem to arise but of course you've got to get to that situation to copy and paste and these blocks here this is no good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold shift and z and highlight everything around here and then uh, with my a uh, good old uh, shift g uh, i'm going to spread this out one block in every direction just so i'm making sure that i have the area that i'm dealing with and the little section that has all the overlaps potentially and then we're going to try a few different buttons if i hold down shift and press the up arrow then everything gets leveled up if i press down it starts to move the earth up and down if I hold control and down, then everything goes straight back to the very bottom and control and up and it goes all the way up to the top. And then you can have a mess around with shift left and right keys, which changes the subtle little amounts that we move again with control left and right keys. Then it's just going to do it at a different rate. But once you've got it all nice and how you want it, then well, you're done and you can just copy and paste. So let's get down into this area here. I want to mess with this. I'll replace these two. The idea is that you go through this POI that I've designed and the kind of story I've got is this door opens kind of at the end when you've completed everything. And if you come in here, you, if you do decide to have a look in, you find a couple of nice loot boxes. But rarely do people break the loot boxes afterwards. And if they do, they're going to find a little kind of secret tunnel and a whole other part of the POI. So I need to kind of shoot down here and I need to kind of like make myself my little base. I'm going to press press Z and get a little box at the bottom. Hold down left alt to kind of see the area. And if I hold down left alt and then type shift G, nothing happens. But if I go shift G and then hold down with my thumb, it's kind of a bit weird with the old fingers. I can actually get both of these up at the same time. I'm going to make a little void here. Uh, with this little void, I'm going to make a little room underneath. I better fly over and around this side. Shift G, then Alt. And I'm just going to spread this out. And then pressing J, I should have a beautiful little room in here. And there's my tunnel downwards. Now, the way I've made the POI, this happens to be right on the edge. So if I want this to be concrete, I'm going to have to do something with the outside wall here. So let me just kind of take a little area here. Don't know if it's the right size yet. I'll correct that later if needed. I'll get my little block, press L. That's all lovely. And, of course, we have this little issue here 
all the way around the edge. You don't need to bother with it, but if you're like me and you want to make your POIs absolutely perfect, then of course highlight them and then control up. And you're just going to kind of make sure that this always looks absolutely perfect in case somebody does decide to dig out the POI. Next, I need to sort out the little tunnel system here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to have to get a ladder in there, aren't I? I'm just going to kind of break out a few of these little bits. I could highlight it, but for these little jobs, I just prefer to do them manually just so I can kind of get visualize what's going on. Um, maybe we will, though, use the technique of doing lots of them here using this. So I'm going to place all the blocks. Bam, they're in there. And then redig my tunnel back up all the way to the top oops a daisy i've just noticed that i haven't done this level here so i'm going to highlight from here all the way to there just fill that up that looks all good and again let's just keep doing it practice is what's going to make it perfect for you always go one block further than you need control and up it all looks very tasty nice i've got my kind of bunker entrance i've got to do the the roof and all this lot what if i want to mess with some other tools though what if i didn't want this concrete i want this to be just wood underground well i've got my wood block and i can place one down i can highlight and replace but we do have this little admin tool this is the dev admin block replace tool it's the purple there are actually two of these it's the purple one you want if i do have a particular block you wouldn't probably do it with this one but if you want a particular block i could highlight a whole area over here that i want to replace i walk up with this tool and left click and it, you get a squeaky little sound you hear that and that little squeaky sound means that I've copied this. And then I can kind of highlight an area if I only want to replace in a certain area. Or I don't have to have it highlighted at all. And I can go up to those and I can end up hitting them. Now, when I hit them, then they change to a new block. And of course, what I could do is hold down R. And I could say replace all blocks of same type. And I could hit them and it changes absolutely everything, which means that it has actually changed everything on my POI of that type, which is not what I want. That's why you kind of want to highlight the area that you want to deal with, because when you do that and I right click, it changes this, but it doesn't change the other blocks surrounding it. I also want to have a quick look at the dev um, terrain modeling tool. This is like a, a little spade and it's got a sphere on here and it's the yellow section that's important. That's the bit that's actually being interacted with. Shift and then use your middle mouse wheel to kind of make this bigger and smaller. And as you get to the area that you want, if you left click, then it starts to and I'm just clicking here, um, it starts to bring out the, uh, the, the kind of the, the terrain from the side behind it. And if you right click, then it kind of makes it kind of go in. It takes a bit of practice, but of course we could have it in here where the, 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 it's been built, but we could have this, or maybe we could turn this to rock. And we could have it as part and parcel of the feature of doing this. Now, when you start messing with this, you start to see these little errors here on the outside where it kind of bulges. Now, that's fine. There's nothing actually there. But what I like to do once I've done all my terrain modeling is I like to highlight the outside of each edge just like so and you can see that little bit is in there and if you press J then it's just going to flatten everything up and make everything look nice and tidy again and quick the super secret let's say we've made this all super pretty and we're going to shove some things down on the ground that i want people to swim for so let me get a couple of weapons bags maybe and we're going to place some on the ground here we're going to maybe uh, put some different blocks down as well of different heights and uh, let's get some other little bags here i'll put one on top of here and i'll put two over here all looking good but what if i want this to be flooded the problem is is people go into the creative menu and they type in water and they correctly pick the water block poi placing that in their hand ready to go and then whoops a daisy i flew around a bit too fast there they start to try and place water around these objects because they want to make it all look good and they spend hours and hours and hours trying to make this look all good now yeah you can, you're welcome to do that but i'm going to show you to finish today's video the little secret and of course the secret is so awesome and I found it personally by accident. Maybe everyone knows it and I don't. But this is how you fill things up. Let's say I want this room filled up to this level with water. 
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little block here. That's the level that I want to go to. Uh, let me just line myself correctly. And I am going to press backspace there, clear that. I'm going to press Shift Z and I'm going to highlight this block here. Let me clear my hands so you can see this block here. I'm then going to go all the way down to the far corner and I'm going to hold Shift Z. So I haven't made sure that I'm not, I don't want to be outside at all. I just want the block. Here it is. This is everything I want to be filled with water. And are you ready? Are you ready? This is just the coolest thing ever. I'm going to press L. Yep, everything's full of water. That's no good. And then I'm going to hold Control and Z. Now what that does, backspace to clear, is it fills everything with water. And then Control Z undoes the deletion of that area. And all those weapon bags and blocks. And look what we end up getting. We end up getting everything perfectly full of water and uh, all looking great with everything submerged absolutely perfectly oh no i just realized i actually oh, I filled it with water and i want to place some more blocks down but i can't because well we're underwater can i put some more loot on the floor no i can't what am i gonna do how am i gonna fix this i didn't make a save back up ah don't you worry you've just got to highlight everything again again making sure that you do not highlight outside the block or it gets very messy very quickly we're all good in here i'm going to press j this time absolutely delete everything fill it with air Control z and everything comes back all clean of water and you can continue to kind of make your little rooms place your little doors down whatever you're gonna have a right fun making caves and basements and lots of fun things like that so to finish the video i'm going to show you around the little poi that i've created just a little quick tour um obviously down here there'll be a super basement and this will be locked in the editor i can open and close things but it's locked and the door is left open this one is going to be unlocked and it's going to be left open because I think I want to put a zombie here because what I want people to do is come onto this POI and uh, I've had to come up with a story haven't I you've got to kind of get a feeling for this I want people to come around here and then find this one I'll hold down E and lock it I want to they want to find this one locked and then they want to have a look around I'm sure I'll have a little bit of trash and things for people to pick up then they're going to come over here and this is going to be locked too but eventually, as they're walking around and they find all these doors locked, they might come around here and see a light, kind of guiding them in the pathway. And a zombie's going to kind of jump out here and maybe cause some problems. This will be locked. They come around and find these nice industrial pipes. Now, I got the inspiration for these from one of the tiles where this is placed, and there's similar pipes on the side. And they come around here, and there's another light pointing them in the right direction. This is going to be locked mess around, fight a few zombies, and then take this ladder and come up here. Because then they go, oh, look at this. This is lovely. I want to grab this. And what's going to happen is when they're standing on here, whoa, it's all going to break up and we're going to be inside this little office area, walking around. Probably some more zombies will appear. And there's the control panels for the little pipes that kind of come through. Uh, there's a little workstation. And eventually opening this door is going to lead to a generator room and there'll be a button here and again buttons will cover in future videos so make sure that you do subscribe and uh, once you've done that all the doors will open and uh, you'll be able to come around here and uh, get your lovely loot these two boxes but if you're in the know then you're going to be heading down here well look at this look at this i'm pressing z i'm holding shift g i'm just going to make sure that this kind of slides out in all directions um just by one and uh, then i'm going to hold control up control down there you go control down now my little tunnel looks absolutely perfect more to do down here i've given you the secret to the water I would appreciate it if you could drop me a comment, if you could reply to other people's comments, if you could buy some merch, if you could do anything that basically helps the channel out. More tutorials coming very, very soon. So click on one of these videos that are now popping up and I will, well, just see you later for some more super knowledge. Goodbye.